for this problem then we have the crate has a weight of W equal 150 pounds and the coefficients of static and kinetic friction are 0.3 and 0.2 respectively. Determine the frictional force on the floor um, if theta is equal to 30 degrees and P is equal to 200 pounds. So we're given the coefficients of static and kinetic friction being 0.3 and 0.2. So Remember when we have a, a box or any object, we represent the, the weight of it at the center of mass, in this case is 150 pounds, right, being directed here. Now we're being asked to find the friction force on the floor itself. So remember we have that normal force, let's call it N, and the frictional force, which is always op opposing any motion or impending motion. So in this case, we have a force going towards the right direction. So we're going to have that going opposite of the right, going towards the left, and the friction. So we're going to go ahead and solve for that frictional force first. So first, doing the sum of forces along the x direction. So we have the frictional force at the surface being 173.2. To one pounds. Now let's go ahead and solve for that normal force, which is the sum of force along the y direction. And so the normal force is equal to 50 pounds here. So now that we solve the unknowns here, which is the normal force and the frictional force at the surface, let's go ahead and see what the maximum static frictional force is, which we already know the equation is the coefficient of static friction times that normal force. So the maximum possible static frictional force is 15 pounds. And we see that that's actually above that maximum um, friction of the static. So remember, remember the cases. For case one, when there is no motion, the frictional force is less than or equal to the static frictional force. And we see that that's not the case. It's not, e and it's also not case two. It's not even case two where the force is exactly equal to the the static frictional force, which means it must be case three where there is motion. And that means the the equation that we need to be using to solve for that um, frictional force is actually the kinetic frictional force, which is the coefficient of kinetic friction times that normal force. So the actual... Um, frictional force at the surface is the kinetic friction, which is 10 pounds. So this 173 pounds is actually incorrect. Now, the main reason being, since we determined that this box is actually in motion, that means it's invalid for us to use the static equilibrium equations because remember, the equations that we're using are equal to zero because all the forces are canceled out because we're assuming that the object is stationary, it's static. But in this case, since there is motion, this equation does not hold, which means in this case, we had to use the equation for the kinetic frictional force, which is equal to 10 pounds. And so this ultimately is our answer. The frictional force at the surface is 10 pounds. So when it comes to the, these problems, it's kind of a little bit different because you have to double check, right? You, you could do all these um, formulas, you solve for the appropriate values, but you have to compare it to these other equations, which is the frictional force equations, to be able to determine what the actual situation is, whether there's motion or whether there isn't, to determine what appropriate equations to apply and to actually get the correct values. So this is one thing that's a little bit different. Um, it takes some getting used to, but it's actually pretty cool to be able to kind of um, double check your answer with other formulas to see what's going on in the situation. In this case, whether there's motion or whether there isn't. And since we did determine there was motion, the actual frictional force that we initially saw for the sum of forces along the X was incorrect because the underlying assumption was that the object was stationary, which is not. So we had to use the, the kinetic frictional force equation here. And so this is how you solve problems that involve friction.